Tech fans, what's going on? So it's a positive video and it's a negative video today. So let's start with the, uh, the elephant in the room. Yesterday, the Tigers were playing the New York Yankees. And Riley Green, who's been absolutely murdering the ball so far this spring, notched his seventh extra base hit of camp. Fouls a ball off of his foot from Garrett Cole. Proceeds to then smack a triple. His seventh extra base hit of the spring. Now, in my last video, I made a couple of uh, wrong statements. I said that none of them had home runs. Uh, Green had actually had a home run. He has now has two home runs. Torkels has made a couple of bids for homers, but he has missed uh, <laughs> a couple of times off the wall. I kind of feel bad for him. Uh, but neither here nor there. Torkelson... Uh, didn't have any home runs, but Riley Green did. He had a couple. He actually had seven extra base hits. He's hitting 400 for spring camp. By far the hottest Tigers hitter out of anyone in camp. And he comes off limping. And turns out he has a fracture in his foot. It does not require surgery, which is the good thing. Uh, but it's looking like he's going to be out a little bit. He's not going to be there opening day which really stinks because what I wanted to happen was going to happen. I was going to be able to go to opening day and see both Green and Torkelson make their major league debuts. But he's now going to be out, which now puts the Tigers in a bit of a conundrum of what are they going to do in the outfield. Uh, today, Al Avila was asked if they were seeking external solution, i.e. a free agent. Justin Upton was just released today for some weird reason – People are linking the Tigers to re-getting Justin Upton, which I would think is absolutely stupid because Justin Upton, he's he's having an okay spring, but he just can't hit anymore. His his biggest asset at one time is he was good at pretty decent at getting on base, and he would hit you thirty some home runs. And really, his last truly, truly great year was the year the Tigers traded him, which I want to say was 2017 when they got rid of him to the Angels because uh, he was about to opt out. And the Tigers lucked out that they did trade him to the Angels, and he opted out, and the Angels repaid him to to stay there because he had a really good year. He was actually like uh, near, like above average left fielder, had, had some uh, good power numbers, but he just he's just not that hitter anymore. He's not that player, which is really weird because Justin Upton – is only in his early 30s. And he's been in the league a really long time, too. Like, I remember when he got called up, he was like 20 years old when he was with the Diamondbacks. So he's been in the league a really long time, but I don't understand why Al Avila and the Tigers would even consider signing Justin Upton when Riley Green comes back. One, Justin Upton's not a center fielder. So your one position of need that people were questioning, can Riley Green play center over a course of a season because he's mainly a right fielder and he proved why he's a great right fielder. And really, so far this whole camp, what I've been saying since spring training started and what I've been saying for the last couple of years about Riley Green being a George Springer 2.0 and his defensive skill set and his bat-to-ball skills and the power he has and how he has superstar written all over him, He's pretty much done nothing but prove my point. Now, getting up then, like I said, he's not a center fielder. And a lot of people are still questioning, can Green play center field effectively over 162 games? Which now we know he's not because he's hurt. He's going to miss probably a month's worth of games. So it doesn't really matter. But going out and getting an outfielder, when you have Haas, you have Badu, you have Grossman, you have Reyes... Derek Hill is hurt. You still have Daz Cameron in the minor leagues if you get really, really desperate because they did use him a little bit last year. So they have plenty of outfield depth to do this internally, especially because Juan Green's injury wasn't a break. It was only a fracture, and he doesn't need surgery. So going out and getting like a Justin Upton, someone who his best asset is no longer even there, which was his power ability, and... He's been so bad in left field that the Angels were putting him at first base a little bit. It makes absolutely no sense. Now, if they were to go out and get like a fourth outfield depth option guy that could play center field some, 
like, okay, fine. Like, I get it. Like, someone that you don't expect to play outfield every single day when Riley Green returns. Because Spencer Torkelson today made the roster. Al Avila came out and announced that they, Miguel Cabrera, him, and A.J. Hinch all met up. And Miguel Cabrera actually handed Torkelson his first base mitt and, you know, told him he, he made the team, which was awesome. Uh, Torkelson didn't have as good a spring as uh, Riley did. Uh, but he still, every single day, he was played a very good first base. He was out there giving great at bats, great at bats. And this kid, he's been, uh, go look at some of his like numbers so far for spring. He has, he's got hit by like four pitches, but he still stayed in the box. He's given good at bats. He's not looking like he's overwhelmed. He had, uh, he's had a couple of uh, ABs this year where so far in spring where he had like an eight pitch walk. He had a 10 pitch walk and he's doing it off of really good pitchers. Like he had one off of Garrett Cole. So, he just has not looked overmatched. He has not looked like he's not, you know, ready to be in the big leagues. Uh, so far, uh, like if you listen to the Compound Podcast, even Zach Short was talking about, uh, you know, how good a teammates Riley Green and Spencer Torkelson have been. Uh, like Riley Green got pulled out of the game after a couple of bats, still stayed in with the rest of the team for the remainder of the game uh, while the, you know, the other made it to camp big leaguers, you know, left for the day but he stayed there the whole time you know he's there every single uh after every single bat giving guys high fives and everything else and this is straight from zach short's mouth and spencer torkelson if you guys don't listen to the compound podcast you really should because it's great um uh, especially because too with zach short there even though he's in in triple a he got optioned like i thought he would there's still <clears throat> some good Tigers stuff that you like behind the scenes stuff. And Spencer Torkelson was on it and Robbie Grossman's been on it. So it's been pretty cool. But Spencer was on there. Uh, and so far I've heard the same thing from so many different people when it came to interviews uh, from players that Torkelson and Riley Green have both been great teammates. And, you know, they're very mature beyond the years being only 21, 22 years old. So it's awesome. They're both making it. But Riley Green getting hurt. And especially because with them announcing Torkelson today is uh, making the club, you know, Riley Green would have been right there with him because Riley Green outshined him in spring, whether it was his defense in the outfield, being able to play multiple positions, whether it's been, you know, hitting over 400 in spring, seven extra base hits. Like Riley Green came to win a job and, you know, so did Spencer Torkelson. But like I said, Green was just a stud and it really sucks that he's hurt. Uh, Andrew Chafin is hurt as well. Uh, he's got a groin thing going on. They don't know how long he's going to be out. So, you know, they still got other guys that are vying for that last spot, uh, like Drew Hutchinson and Foley and Lang. So they have plenty of depth and uh, for that aspect of it to make up because Chafin's going to be a big piece out of their bullpen because uh, he's been pretty good over the last few years. He's a valuable reliever and a veteran guy, and, you know, it's going to be good when he comes back. But now that him or there, you know, we'll go over that in my next video with my brother when we do our 2022 season preview. It just sucks, man. Like, I figured I'd come on here and, and and you know, give my thoughts on Green being hurt um, as well as he played to not make the roster. Because, I mean, he's going to make his major league debut this year. I mean, it's inevitable. Torkelson made it. Green with the camp he had, he was going to make it. He's going to make his debut and it's going to be special and it's going to be great. But there's nothing like, I would say, obviously never being a major leaguer, being someone, me, who's an overweight 30-year-old who's making videos about 21-year-old players. Uh, I can only imagine being that young and you're making your major league debut, not like in a random game in June, but first day of the year, Comerica Park is going to be loaded, 40,000 people, and... They're going to say your name, announce it across the loudspeaker. Everyone is absolutely going to be cheering for you as loud as they can because, you know, it's been like that in, in spring this year. I mean, if you listen to the games or watch the games that have been so far in Lakeland, when Torkelson and Green come up, it doesn't matter if it's a fourth inning at bat and there's no one on. They're, the claps have a little bit, been a little bit louder for both of these guys because everyone's been hearing about them and people want them up in the big leagues. So I can only imagine the disappointment uh, to play so well and prove out like they have and like Green did to now not be able to do that. And he's going to debut this year. It's inevitable. But to not be able to come out on opening day, day one, 
you got a whole 162 ahead of you. You worked your ass off to get to this point, and now you're not going to be there. It's going to be disappointing. I, he's got to be a little bit disappointed, I would imagine. So I think what happens now is, is the Tigers, uh, when they were going to have this issue with carrying three catchers and how they were going to get Haas in the lineup a little bit, they have plenty of outfield depth, I would say, and I have been saying, to get them through this because Victor Reyes can play center, but do can play center in a pinch. Derek Hill is going to be back. You can rotate the corners, no issue, because you still have Robbie Grossman. You know, you still have Eric Haas. So it's not like there's not an issue or, like, there's not an issue with availability or depth. They have it there to replace it. I would say to go out and get a free agent and get someone like Justin Upton to where Justin Upton really doesn't have really – any which way to supplant anyone because even if he does do well as soon as riley green comes back someone's gonna get ab's taken away from them uh to make up for it and it's not like he's gonna be dh'ing because they got miggy dh'ing now because of torkelson's gonna be their everyday first baseman so it's not like upton's gonna get any reps at first because they're gonna have torkelson there so there's really nowhere there him for him i mean not unless they're saying hey upton we're gonna bring you in uh with a not guaranteed, you know, you're going to make it on the roster the entire year and you're going to be a bench bat, you know, and they let like someone like Victor Reyes go. And, but I don't even know if that's even that much of an upgrade because Victor Reyes is a better outfielder. He can play all three outfield spots. And at this point to say who's a better hitter of the two is, it's kind of hard to even say, because Upton's just not that good anymore. And, you know, he's, he can't even stick it in the angels outfield uh, so why would the Tigers waste, even if they gave him a million dollars for a year and told him you're going to be a, a fifth or fourth, fifth outfielder when you still have Derek Hill, who's going to play way better defense than anyone. You got Victor Reyes, who's versatile. Eric Haas, who I think is a better version of Justin Upton. You know, they're probably about the same OBP average kind of guys. And Haas is the same kind of pop at this point in Justin Upton's career. So right then and there, Haas Upton are pretty much like the equals of one another. So that doesn't really make any sense. And you have Haas on your team already who can give you reps behind the plate and can play both corner spots. So it doesn't really make sense. I think what they do now is they wait for him to get healthy. They let the internal options do what they got to do to make up for Green not being there. But when Green comes back, you know, I think he might get off to a little bit of a slow start. A couple games, get his feet wet, you know, get, get the speed back underneath him of the game. But, man... If if he can, if he can just do a quarter of what he did in spring, and he can play like 120 games this year, you're looking at a guy that could compete for the rookie of the year voting. Honest to God, he's really, really, he's a special talent, and I'm very disappointed he's not going to be here. But I'm super excited to see him when he does come up because if he comes up mid May and he gets 120 games in, he's he's going to do some special things because with that defense. His his amazing extra base power skills, you know, to go gap to gap, be able to hit power both ways. He's a special talent, man, and I and I can't wait to see him up. So that's all I got for you guys today. Sucks Green's hurt. Sucks the Tigers are kind of facing a little bit of adversity so close to the end of camp. Uh, but I think we have the, the internal depth options here to make up for it. And let's just hope Green recovers fast and he's here by May. So I got for you guys today. We'll be back uh, in a couple days to do 2022 spring training, uh, 2022 Detroit Tigers opening day preview. Have a good one, guys.